Good morning. Today we're in Fairfax, Chantilly to be exact. And we're actually on the Chantilly Ox Road battlefield. Uh, Jackson was here and it's kind of like we're headed towards Antietam at this point. Um, whoa, something just ran in the, the bushes. I don't know what the heck that was. That was weird. I don't know if it was a chipmunk or something. It didn't look like a chipmunk. It looked more like a mole. But a mole on the surface. Emmett says it might have been a dinosaur. I think it was a dinosaur? Yep. Yep. I'm not feeling coming today. I think we should have gone that way, Yim. But that's okay. So then I think we might have to leave here. We might go do some some Disney stuff, which is really weird and interesting and a good story. And uh, it's a good and bad story. And then after that, and then after that, I think we're going home. This is weird. Okay. Phil Kearney died here. He was a one-armed Union general. I had no idea. I, saw, I believe he's buried in Arlington, and I believe we saw his grave when we were running around Arlington a couple weeks ago. Or last week. So, it's pretty interesting. This guy, Taliber, because that name is pronounced Taliber, not Talia Pharaoh. He was from down King Queen area. Oh, if only Northern Virginia still looked like that. Whew. I'd like it a whole lot better. Let's check this out. There's a big marker for where Phil Kearney died. Phil Kearney, I guess. And then where another general. Isaac Stevens died. That's pretty cool. Here's Kearney's stump. Some people claim that's where Kearney was when he died. Or that's where he was shot. Or that's actually where Stevens was when he was killed. But other people believe that this giant lump of quartz is actually where Stevens died. And Kearney was over that direction. Who really knows? Does it matter? I don't think so. But markers. <sighs> markers everywhere. And headed towards the site of something pretty incredible. You remember the spy, Robert Hansen. This is the bridge that Robert Hansen used to leave his secrets under. And then his Russian contact would come pick them up, or they would meet here, one or the other. Right next to a big old country club in the town of Vienna. So right now I'm at the intersection of Route 15 and Route 66 in Haymarket, Virginia. And what's interesting about this, I'm in a park and ride. Is it right across the street here? This street right here, which is very busy. Ooh, look, it's a whole daggone bone laying there on the ground. But anyway, right across there, this would have been the entrance to Disney's America. Yes, that's right, a Disney World Park, a Disney Park, right here in Virginia, in Haymarket, Virginia. But they got killed. Being a group of historians calling themselves Protect Historic Virginia, and these are some respected historians. Doris Kearns, Goodwin, uh, Barbara Fields, Shelby Foote, Van Wordward, uh, James McPherson, and oh, the list goes on. Arthur Schleisinger Jr. All got together and they said, this is not a good idea. You're, you're right on top of um, 
Manassas National Battlefield, which is about five miles away. Um, they would have done everything that Disney does here. They had plans to build a river rafting ride based on Lewis and Clark. They were going to tell the American story in the park. And that's where people object, objected. Because the American story is tough. And Disney teaching history would have been tough. Uh, even Bob Weiss, who works for Disney Parks, came out and said, imagine what it would be like to be a slave for a day. That's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. How could... Why would you even... Anyway. Um, James McPherson said that it would desecrate the, me the ground over which men fought and died for. Here's my thing. Just behind where Jackson stood like a stone wall. There's a Golden Corral and a Holiday Inn Express and a Wendy's and urban sprawl as far as you can see. Did, a, did the men who fought that battle fight and die to have a Wendy's? Uh, I don't think so. You know, they say the Battle of Manassas started in view of Wilmer McLean's front porch and ended in his front parlor. Where exactly is Wilmer McLean's front porch today? I think it's buried under the parking lot of a CVS. So, but all that's five miles that way. Saying that battles and part of the battle weren't fought over here. So what's here today? Remember, David McCullough, David McCullough worried about the urban sprawl like there is along I-4 Central Florida and in Anaheim. What's over there today? Let me go take a look. Nope. No urban sprawl here. Nope. None whatsoever. Oh, maybe I'm looking out the wrong side of the car. No urban sprawl over here either. Whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's a nice spot. Disney would have looked beautiful here. I mean, and just think. Disney only wanted to use just a little more than half of the land that they had purchased, or were about to purchase, to build the theme park and the surrounding stuff. There was going to be 40% of the property left as green, a green space buffer. You wouldn't even see the urban sprawl. I agree. This is hallowed ground. But check this out. Grocery store, a Starbucks, a UPS store, Tony's Pizza. I, I mean, Domino's. It's really nice shopping center. I mean, I gotta imagine that this would be like Lewis and Clark River Rapids and and everything else. A CrossFit, an Animal Hospital. Here may be the only part of Disney's plan I got built. A golf course. Well, I totally understand not wanting Disney to tell tell the the American story. I get it. But they're Disney. 
They are Disney. They are not the Smithsonian. They are not the National Park Service. They are not Doris Kearns Goodwin. They are not David McCullough. They're Disney. But here's what they could have done. They could have helped Disney tell an American story, which Disney already does. They already do it. Look at Main Street USA. Look at Frontierland. America has an entire history with the frontier. Big Thunder Mountain, it's the Old West. Look at New Orleans Square. Look at Tom Sawyer Island and the area that surrounds Tom Sawyer Island. It's a version of Hannibal, Missouri. After the 1800s, or in the late 1800s. Um, DCA has a giant wooden roller coaster with a Ferris wheel. They have, they built an amusement park, kind of, that fits within that turn of the century American amusement park idea. They have the pieces scattered among their existing parks that could all be in a park right there. They don't have to tell the an American the American story. They can tell an American story, and they already do. I mean, just think of having a whole area built around the idea of the evolution of flight, which is part of the American story. Orville and Wilbur on the on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. That's where it starts, you know. And, and just think of what you could build around that. The, uh, you could have an airplane hangar, which could be a restaurant. There could be biplanes and all kinds of planes hanging from the ceiling, uh, which they kind of already do at Disney Springs with Jock Lindsay's. You could have you, the menu items like, oh, I don't know, uh, Chuck Yeager's Mach 1 Hot Chicken Sandwich. Or Orville Wright's Kitty Hawk Catch of the Day Fish Sticks. Um, what else? I don't, the possibilities are endless. Um, and also at Disney Springs, there's a restaurant set up like uh, um, whose theme, whose story. Is prohibition it's a it's a speakeasy can you imagine going to a restaurant that tells the story of prohibition sort of a speakeasy you could go to this there could be a raid and the family of the day could get pulled off to the hoose gal somewhere I mean there's tons of American stories that Disney could tell in this place. We didn't have to tell the American story. Just an American story. It's not just the historians and the opposition to it that, that killed it. Euro Disney. Uh, Euro Disney's opening problems. Uh, Frank Wells dying in a helicopter crash. Michael Eisner having a heart attack and then quadruple bypass surgery. And all these things killed it. And then there's the question of whether Disney can run a three-season park. Which I think they could. Because now, I mean, King's Dominion open practically year-round. Busch Gardens is open practically year-round. Disney could be open practically year-round. We could have had a Disney park right here in Virginia. Two hours from where we live. Two hours from Richmond. Can you imagine? Anyway, this is enough ranting. So we decided to make a stop on the way home and get some pizza. So now we're in Sperryville at the Rappahannock Pizza Kitchen, which we love. The corner store, local market is also one point. So if you're ever in Sperryville, make sure you stop. I think we missed our turn. <laughs> we'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. Yes, I've been saying. Say ya. See ya. See ya.